How's everybody doing? Yeah. I'm trying to cut my phone off. I forgot to turn it off. Ain't nobody gonna call me right now. Uh, it's day one of Kayamo. And uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, plug these things in. And everybody looks fresh, everybody looks happy, everybody looks energetic. So let the uh, substance and alcohol abuse begin. I'm happy to be here, I really am. I think it'd be interesting if uh, everybody took a picture, a real clear picture without any makeup on, of their face right now, and then take that another picture the last day of the cruise. And I believe you would see an actual difference. <laughs> Okay. Here's a song that says, everybody looks good at the starting line. <laughs> when you're born, it's a beautiful thing. They put a pacifier in your mouth. You crawl around naked on the kitchen floor. And your mom and daddy feel so proud. one girl that I liked a lot. Her name was uh, Pollyanna Bradley. 
and uh, I, she was gorgeous. And I wanted her to go to the fair with me. And I asked her, I said, I asked her by the, by the sliding board. I said, will you go to the fair with me? And she said, no. <laughs> she went with some other boy. And I wanted to go to the fair with her because uh, there was this ride called the Himalaya. It was a thing that just went in a circle real fast. And whoever you were sitting by, even if they didn't want to, they would get squished right up against you. I wanted Polly to just crush me. She did crush me, but in a different way. But after I looked at her picture on Facebook the other day, still here. Deborah's gone. And uh, uh, it's hard. I think it's actually, it's hard for everybody, but I think it's especially hard for my sister because that was, that was like half of her. Because when you're twins, it's different, you know. you got a connection that nobody else has and they can't have because it's just the way that God made it. But anyway, she been, Charlotte's really been struggling. She really has missing, uh, missing Deborah. And uh, she said, I wish I could, one night she, I called Charlotte on the phone, I said, you okay? She said, no, I'm not. She said, but I had a, a, a breath of sunshine today. And I said, what happened? She said, well, 
uh, I wanted to hear Deborah's voice. And right after I was thinking about wanting to hear her voice, I looked at my phone and there was a, a message that she had sent me and it said, hey Charlotte, I just want to tell you I love you. And she kept that recording and she's going to keep it forever so she can hear my sister Deborah tell her that. Have you ever missed somebody that's gone? We all have that. There's a dark cloud in the sky Outside the city lights are glowing Memories come crashing in Wrap around me like a winter wind blowing And it chills me to the bone Green. 
Enjoy. 
How many of y'all out there tonight has a friend that's crazy? Everybody has a crazy friend. Somebody that's hard to deal with, <laughs> but you love them anyway. Uh, one of my great friends, uh, his name was we, his name was Dennis, but we called him Murdoch. And uh, off the character from the A-Team. Remember that? Because he was crazy. But anyway, uh, Murdoch was my friend for many years. And uh, uh, one of my memories of him was one night we went to the 7-Eleven to get some gay raid and beer. And, uh, and uh, while I was getting it and paying for it, I looked out and he was out in the parking lot dancing with a broom as if it was a female. He was caressing the broom and dancing seductively. And the police came. And uh, they said, sir, you can't dance with a broom in the parking lot. And he said, this is my woman, back off. You can't cut in. You can't cut in. And they, took, they took him to jail. And when he got to jail, he said, I want some Sprite and they wouldn't bring him no Sprite. So he stuffed the toilet in the jail with toilet paper and it flooded the whole jail and they beat him. They beat him to a pulp. And then uh, he had black eyes when I bailed him out. I loved him, he was a good guy. And last year, I'm not trying to be uh, so somber all night, but it's just life, this is what happened. Last year, he, uh, out of nowhere, he was taking a shower and he dropped dead, he died in the shower. And uh, so we went out there and we, uh, he has a nice uh, a lake by his house where he lived and so we spread his ashes. Well, I didn't spread his ashes, his brother did. And uh, as his brother was spreading the ashes, uh, some of the ashes went in, the wind was blowing, and some of the ashes went in my mouth. <laughs> and it tasted like ass. <laughs> two times. So, how many of y'all ever heard the song? Okay, those y'all that know what to do, help them that don't. Tonight and all through life. Stopping in New Orleans, drive a 
say good. You know you look a lot like Fabio. You can go far. The hack say thank you, man. I love this car. Somebody that really helped you become the man you became that was able to afford a ticket to go on a special <laughs> tour. <laughs> Are you for real? Mother Superior? That name is just, it makes me think of something you'd look on a porno site. <laughs> But she was a good lady, right? She taught you something, right? Okay, good. That's good. Discipline. Oh, that's another word. Thank God for the clear history button. <laughs> Mother Superior was, was, was one of Joe's great influences. Uh, two of my great influences was my father, my father the Pentecostal preacher, and my and his brother, my uncle the pimp. <laughs> this is a song that honors Joe's hero and mine too. My daddy had a Cadillac, my uncle drove a Ford. One was Satan's angel and one worked for the Lord. They had some heart and wisdom. They both became my teachers. I was a young disciple of pimps and preachers. The school of life was open. Each day I went to class when I didn't attention they keep me in the ass they were turning out the young bitches and converting non-believers i'm learning from the masters pimps and preachers one drove me to the darkness one led me to the light one showed me how to love one taught me how to fight They gave me a pinstripe suit and pushed me from the nest. Now I'm standing on the corner recruiting hungry seekers. I'm starting a new religion, I call it Pimps and Preachers. One drove me through the darkness, one led me to the light. One showed me how to love, one taught me how to fight. what they told me. You can stand there and do nothing, but if you want to go far, don't 
Don't try to please everybody and be proud of who you are. Get out there in the game. Don't sit up in the bleachers. That is the philosophy of pins and preachers. One took me through the darkness. One led me to the light. One showed me how to love. One taught me how to fight. CMT of all things and and uh, he was singing a song called There's More Than One Way Home and that really, this song really touched me and uh, I wrote my own version of this song because you know one question I when I get close to people uh, I always ask them this question when the moment's right I say what you think is going to happen when the, heart, when the heart stops what do you think is going to happen on the other side of life and, and uh, most of them say I don't know and that's okay Muslims, Christians, Buddhists, and Jews got their own version of the truth. There's a line in the sand, there's a wall going on. They forgot to remember you might be wrong. Carry your faith everywhere you go. Mix it with Sunday school. <laughs> don't cut me off, don't say we're through. Just because I don't agree with you. You see, flowers grow as seeds of love are sown. You could be right, you might be wrong. But why do we argue? Why do we fight? Everybody thinks God's on this side. watches for these evil women on the cruise. <laughs> and I talked to her. I paid AT&T $100 
extra so that I can speak internationally and talk to my wife and family every day. And uh, she told me, she said, tell all them whores I said hello. <laughs> temptation. <laughs> a long way from home, while drinking a beer, a beautiful stranger whispered in my ear, come up to room 307, and don't tell a soul. I've heard forbidden fruit is sweeter, but I don't want to know. She asked me to dance, she didn't see no harm. But if you dance with the devil, she turn on her charm. These are some dangerous circumstances. I think I should go. I'm tempted wondering what it'd be like to hold But I don't want to know I don't want to know what it's like to cross that line I don't ever want to see my baby cry I could keep it a secret, it would never show What would it cost my heart? I don't want to know My children can play And the angel of my dreams Gotta love her so What I would lose to abuse her trust I don't wanna know I don't wanna know what it's like To live a lie Even if she couldn't tell by looking song has the exact opposite sentiment of that song. <laughs> this song is for a certain group of married people. I'm talking about the ones that each, each night when they kneel by their bed, they pray that their mate will pass away. <laughs> I got lucky on my birthday My wife reluctantly let me have my way She said this is for you Do what you must do Let me know when you're through I thought things would change when we tied the night, but the life I dreamed of ain't what I got. When she says no, she means no. Hell no. Child for 
total rejection. frustrated when I sing this song because you know, I wrote this song and this is the greatest song ever written in the history of the whole world. Some of these seats should be full. I've got a bulldog, he lives on a chain, I know what he's going through. I feel his pain He don't have no fun On that dog to run She never gets none I made, I made a mistake I said, I said the lyric wrong Let me sing that verse I got a bulldog He lives on a chain I know what he's going through I feel his pain he don't have no fun on that dog he run. He never gets none. He's got potential if he could get free. But he's on a short leash, just like me. He goes through life with hungry eyes watching bitches go by <laughs> I couldn't get laid when I was single if you threw me in a woman's prison I am the poster child for total Can y'all relate? 
relate to this song. Uh, it's so hard man, to do the right thing. It really is. That's why we all quit trying. <laughs> Mama said that I was born to win My picture's on her refrigerator She's hoping I won't let her down again Whoa, I sit on Saturday I repent on Sunday Then I tell myself I won't procrastinate on Monday How many of y'all have a uh, famous, somebody famous that's a hero to you? Raise your hand. Okay. I have uh, my two top heroes that's somebody that's famous. There's two people. One of them is Muhammad Ali. And the other one is Mr. Rogers. Yeah. They both did great things. Uh, Muhammad Ali stood for what he believed in. He sacrificed himself. He gave 100%. We all know that. But uh, Mr. Rogers, on the other hand, he was a different kind of hero. He would come on TV and he would say, y'all come on into my house. It's a beautiful neighborhood. Come on, let's talk together. And there was a lot of kids back during that time where they didn't have no father. He became their father. Every day they would turn on the TV to see Mr. Rogers because he cared about them and he made them feel like he was talking to them. And he probably helped a lot of people that, that, that love him. I love him anyway. So, uh, heroes, but the people you look up to the most, they're flawed because we're human. But let's look at the good things in the, in the people that we look up to. That's the best thing. become a parody of himself They dug his grave by the kitchen door the Millions of blue-haired ladies took the guided tour His Chinese fan club came over on the boat took pictures at his Shelter car. 
time ago, I wrote a song called Joni, the Jehovah Witness Stripper. This is a real person. It's not a fictitious story. This really happened. She was having trouble paying her bills when she left home at the age of 18. Her family was Jehovah's Witness. And she started dancing topless for three years and she raised enough money to pay cash for a house. And I want to honor her with this song that celebrates her triumphant story. Close 
channel you could turn it on and it made something called white noise. You don't know what I'm talking about? White noise. It's just a smooth sound, soothing, helps you sleep. And you could take the brightness button on the black and white TV and turn it off and the screen would be black. And so it was like an early sound machine. <laughs> it was a sound machine before sound machines. Uh, and it was great. We had some good times, me and that girl, for a while. I borrowed some money and sold my car. Put a mask on. Everybody be quiet. There's a girl trying to sleep over there. <laughs> Some money, so my car. I put an ass dream trailer up on the blocks. That satellite dish was my first mistake. She started watching Oprah Winfrey and Ricky Lake. She cut me down to once a week. At supper time, there wasn't nothing to eat. Scared to death, she came home with that velvet on her breath.
gets worse. <laughs> She hired the neighbor's son to cut our grass. She gave him cold iced tea and a piece of pie. <laughs> My landlord came while I was out of town. Our pipes got fixed and the rent went down. We fell asleep with the late show on. And now it's 3 a.m. I wake up and she's gone. I got a strong suspicion. She's at it again Since I don't know which trailer she's in I'm gonna burn down the trailer park Shoot the paint flamingos out in the yard Can't live here since you broke my heart I'm gonna burn down the trailer park Dr. Phil don't understand And I can honestly say I've never whooped either one of them with a belt. But it's not because I don't believe in discipline. It's because I found a way to hurt them even worse. <laughs> Take their phone away. <laughs> That's hell for the young folks. I made mistakes as a parent. I ain't always done the right thing. And I, I have regrets for some of the things I've done. But I do care. And I have a plan and I hope it works. I know you have a plan. Hope your plan works.
According to the clock, I got time to do one more song. I want to thank y'all so much for coming tonight. Uh, I got a lake. I got a lake behind my house. I love to go out there and fish. The other day I was home and I wanted to go fishing, but I didn't have any fish bait. So I said, maybe there's something in the refrigerator I can use for bait. So I went in and looked in the refrigerator and there was a stale chicken wing in a Ziploc bag. I said, this looks like something a fish would like. So I took that chicken wing <laughs> and I put it on a hook and I went out to the lake and I threw it out there. In about less than five minutes, something grabbed it. Something started pulling it out. And it was something big, I could tell. At first I thought it was a turtle. And I fought that thing for a long time. And then when I got it up to the bank, it turned out to be a, a, a 25 pound catfish. And uh, yeah, it, was, it blew my mind. And I was having trouble getting it up on the bank. And my neighbor, who unfortunately I hadn't even met yet, saw me struggling to get the fish on the on the bank and he he ran over to help me and when he and when i saw him i recognized him his name was ronnie he was a guy i went to school with and it came back into my memory that uh i used to have an, a relationship with his girlfriend behind his back <laughs> you know, when i was in high school and he he paid for her meals at bonanza and i just had fun with it. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, he came out there to help me get that fish. And he, and he really did help me get the fish up on the bank. And I didn't say, he did, I didn't say anything to him about what had happened in the past because I really need some help getting that fish in. <laughs> if I would have told him what I did, he wouldn't have helped me. <laughs> So anyway, here's a song that sums up our relationship. <laughs> Yeah, that's 